Hi and welcome to My Dad Says Audio. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to be doing a short video on a pair of uh, dipole ribbon tweeters that go by a few names. Um, the, the, probably one of the most, the one people we'd be most familiar with will be Linnaeum. Linnaeum originated in 1983, I believe, in France. Uh, the first iteration had a ported Corian cabinet with the Linnaean, Linnaeum, or Rubinoid, as it's sometimes called, dipole tweeter. In around the mid to late 90s, the tweeter was featured in a Tandy, realistic, or radio shack, depending on what part of the planet you're from, speaker called the Gen Xer. It had a cast metal cabinet. And a fairly inexpensive, or you know, to be uh, to be fair, it's cheapish woofer. Uh, there have been many different builds, including paper, silk, which is supposed to be the best sounding, and two plastic versions. I've owned a pair taken from the Gen Xs and a spare pair I bought under the Optimus brand. And the the plastic versions, even though they look similar, there is a significant difference um, in sound quality. The way to tell if you've got the good sounding one is to hold the ribbon up to a light source and if it's translucent then it's the superior sounding make and it's not a small difference if you've got a mismatched pair you'll probably notice it and it gets it's it's not it's annoying it's 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 unacceptable dad is there anything you wanted to tell us about the Linnaeum or the Rubinoid okay we've had a bit of a play around with this I'm going to try and show you the uh, voice coil in it. It's a little bit hard to see. I'll just see if I can adjust it so that you can see it. All uh, right, I think I've got it there. If you look just there, you can actually see the voice coil, which is printed on uh, what I'd describe as a very thin bit of PCB board, the actual voice coil itself. Uh, as you can see, with this one, I've taken the, the top cover off it, so you can actually see sort of how it works, if you like. There's the magnet assembly, voice coil runs in between and runs around that diaphragm and that diaphragm meet and join the voice coil, sorry. And same story around this way. Uh, they're quite a nice little tweeter. Uh, Tandy used them with just a first order crossover, i.e. A, a capacitor. Um, uh, and from memory, I think uh, he is either 4.7 microfarad or even 6.8 microfarad capacitor. So they actually run down into, I guess what you'd call the uh, upper mid band as well. I've used these and they would match the efficiency of a pair of EPOS ES11s. Use that, that, these with a pair of those, um, tilted the box on its side and stuck these on top, made sure they were physically time aligned to the actual uh, EPOS mid bass driver, and they're about 85, 86 dB, so they give you some idea of the efficiency of these. Anyway, they give you quite a big sound stage and noticeably they sound a bit hard to describe them but I would say they, to anyone that's listened to large panel loudspeakers would immediately recognise the sort of presentation these have. Anyway, that's about all I can add to what's been added. Yeah, they're quite, my dad's, as my dad said, he um, he's mated them with quite a few different speakers. I remember um, he used to sell to noise and uh, to noise and uh, what were they? Gales, a little gales, little, yeah. just small bookshelf speakers. And he made to got rid of the cheap tweeter and you put tilted the box on the side so they're close together. Drivers are close together, and it's, they sounded pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the, these are available. Not for crazy money. I think they they pumped out quite a few from their factory yeah, back yeah. in the nineties. And yeah. there's a few. They, there's even larger ones. There's you can I think under the name Rubinoid. I don't know if they're the same company as Linnaeum, but um, uh, yeah, they they look great. I've seen some 
huge bass drivers as well, you know, much, you know, same principle, but just on a larger scale. So, yeah, no, some, just some interesting tweeters for everyone to have a, you know, consider if you find them, have a go. You might like them. Yeah. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. If you, um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, liking and commenting, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye.